Today we are going to talk about the cause of peripheral edema in persisting heart failure or how edema occur how peripheral edema occur in persisting heart failure or heart failure that persists for a long time or chronic heart failure now basically we have started topic of edema in patients with cardiac failure and in the first lecture we discussed that why peripheral edema why peripheral edema does not occur in acute heart failure and today we are going to discuss discuss that how peripheral edema occur in persisting heart failure or chronic heart failure now basically the cause of peripheral edema now edema edema is basically of two types one is the pulmonary edema which occurs in lung and the second is the peripheral edema which is basically due to fluid collection in the peripheries in the limbs so the basic cause of peripheral edema in persisting heart failure is fluid retention by the kidneys in the in the long term and this is basically the main cause of peripheral edema and we are going to discuss is it in detail in our last lecture we discussed that blood starts coming into the heart into the right atrium from the right atrium blood goes into the right ventricle from the right ventricle blood goes into the lungs where get it gets oxygenated then oxygenated blood comes into the left atrium in the left from the left atrium blood goes into the left ventricle from the left ventricle the blood goes into the human body now it supplies blood to all the human body all the organs all the tissues here we have drawn just one organ that is the kidney and we have just a drawn a glomerulus a glomerulus and the tubules of a kidney at the micro level just to explain the cause of fluid retention by the kidneys and the cause of peripheral edema that occurs in cardiac failure or persisting cardiac failure or chronic cardiac failure now in the last lecture we discussed that when acute heart failure occur acute heart failure so acute heart failure is basically sudden heart failure in sudden heart failure edema peripheral edema does not occur pulmonary edema can occur edema in lungs can occur even in the acute heart failure but peripheral edema does not occur in the acute stage it occurs in the persisting or chronic stage or the heart failure which continues for a long time now in the acute stage what happens is that the mean aortic pressure the mean aortic pressure and at the same time mean arterial pressure the pressure that the pressure of the blood in the aorta or in the peripheral system it drops suddenly so what we have drawn a graph on which we have shown three pressures one is the mean aortic pressure the pressure in the aorta or the mean arterial pressure which is basically pressure in the arteries now normally the the value of this pressure is 100 mm of mercury similarly we have shown pressure in the right atrium now this is pressure in the right atrium the blue color and basically the normal pressure in the right atrium is zero it's 100 in the arterial side normally in a normal heart in a normal human being and it's zero in the right atrium then the capillary pressure pressure at the capillaries at this level Cap capillaries are pres present between the junction of are oxygenated and deoxygenated side basically blood comes in the aorta then it divides into art arteries arterioles finally it goes into the capillaries now there is some pressure in the capillaries as well we discussed that the normal pressure in the capillaries is 17 mm of mercury what happens is that if heart stops pumping the blood it ha heart suddenly stops pumping the blood the pressure in the aorta fall the pressure in the aorta fall in the mean aortic pressure the mean aortic pressure it starts falling down in the acute phase only it occurs in the acute phase only the pressure in the uh, uh, mean arterial pressure it starts falling the pressure in the arterial tree starts falling the pressure in the right atrium starts rising because blood is accumulating in the heart so pressure starts building here blood starts accumulating here so the pressure in the right atrium starts increasing the pressure in the arterial star arterial side starts decreasing and in the acute phase in the acute phase once once a 
a, uh, a stable point is achieved when the arterial pressure meets the right atrial pressure at that point the capillary pressure the pressure in the capillaries the capillary pressure it has also fallen slightly from the 17 mm of mercury to 13 mm of mercury to this point this happens in acute stage so due to fall in the pressure at the capillaries due to fall in pressure in the capillaries edema does not occur because for the edema to occur we see this is a capillary for edema to occur for edema is basically collection of fluid in the interstitium to for the fluid to come out of this capillary the amount of pressure must increase the amount of pressure must increase so if we decrease the pressure in this point in the capillaries if the pressure in the capillaries the capillary pressure decrease then fluid will not come out from the capillaries and edema peripheral edema will not occur and that is the case in the acute stage of heart failure where edema peripheral edema does not occur but once the chronic stage occur the persisting heart failure stage occur that occurs after one day fluid collection by the or fluid retention by the kidneys occur then it leads to increase in mean arterial pressure this mean arterial pressure it starts rising back it starts rising back and the the capillary pressure the capillary pressure also starts increasing back this capillary pressure it also starts increasing it's also it also starts increasing but the right atrial pressure also increases these two pressures goes back to their main level their normal level but at the expense at the expense of right atrial pressure right atrial pressure will continue to increase now why the fluid retention occurs in the heart failure in the chronic stage in the persisting heart failure stage why the fluid retention occur so fluid retention by the kidneys basically occurs through three main mechanism through three main mechanism first of all there is a decrease in the glomerular filtration normally what happens is that blood goes towards the kidney and the blood is basically filtered blood is basically filtered in the glomerulus in the glom this is glomerulus blood is filtered and the sodium the water and electrolytes are filtered into the bowman's capsule in the kidney so this is one mechanism the the decrease in glomerular filtration the pressure of aorta the pressure in the arterial system has fallen down the pressure in the arterial system has fallen down in the acute stage which has led to a decrease in the arterial pressure in the kidney so due to the decrease in pressure the filtration the filtration of sodium and water into the kidneys decreases because the glomerular filtration at this point has decreased and the glo this filtration has decreased due to two main points one is the decrease in the arterial pressure and second thing is the constriction of the afferent arteriole now there are two main arterioles one art type of arterioles takes the blood towards the bowman capsule and the second types basically takes the blood away they go away from the bowman capsule now these afferent afferent arterioles those that takes blood towards the bowman capsule they gets constricted they are constricted they are basically constricted with the help of angiotensin now how angiotensin is secreted we are going to discuss it uh, discuss it in second point so fluid retention by the kidneys occur through three mechanism first of all the first mechanism is basically decrease in glomerular filtration but the decrease in gl glomerular filtration is due to two main points first of all there is a decrease in arterial pressure the pressure here is decreased and second thing is the constriction of the afferent arterioles has occurred so these two things decreases the filtration so less sodium and less water go out of the blood which basically ultimately leads to the formation of urine here urine so less formation of urine the fo urine formation has decreased so fluid is maintained here fluid is maintained because it is not filtered it is not filtered 
The second thing is the activation of the renin angiotensin system. The renin angiotensis angiotensin system and the increase in reabsorption of salt and water. Now what happens that due to decrease in the arterial pressure, due to decrease in arterial pressure, there is secretion of renin renin angiotensin system so there is secretion of renin from these green color this green color portion this is special portion from which renin is secreted this is macular densa now renin is secreted from the this macular densa and some uh, some related parts there uh, some related structures in the kidneys which release renin the renin is converted into angiotensin that angiotensin also causes constriction of the afferent arterioles at this point and it also causes reabsorption it also causes reabsorption of salt and water the small amount of salt and water which has been filtered here from this blood it has been filtered here it goes here it goes here and gets reabsorbed into the blood at this point it is reabsorbed with the help of angiotensin at this point so this is the second reason for fluid retention because of activation of renin angiotensin system which ultimately leads to increased absorption increased absorption from the tubule initially the secretion the filtration has decreased the filtration of salt and water has decreased and that small amount of salt and water which has been filtered it is also been reabsorbed at an increased rate into the blood so that is second reason for for fluid retention now the third reason for fluid retention is fluid retention of course by the kidneys is that there is secretion of aldosterone aldosterone secretion now aldosterone secretion also occurs due to angiotensin this angiotensin which is also causing constriction of the aff afferent arterioles at the same time it also leads to secretion of aldosterone from the adrenal glands Ald aldosterone basically adrenal glands are basically present on top of the kidneys these glands are present on top of the kidneys and aldosterone is secreted from these glands with the help of angiotensin angiotensin and angiotensin was basically secreted from uh, uh, formed with the help of renin and renin was basically secreted from this point due to decrease in arterial pressure so this is basically a cycle which goes on now due to increase aldosterone secretion first of all from the angiotensin and the second point is that there is increased potassium in the heart failure when the when the urine formation has decreased the potassium concentration in the blood increases this potassium concentration also helps in the secretion of aldosterone now what aldosterone does is what aldosterone does is that it also helps in the increased sodium and water reabsorption it also helps in increased sodium and water reabsorption from the tubules from the tubules into the blood from the tubules into the blood that small amount of salt and water which was basically filtered into the tubules has been reabsorbed and at an increased rate first of all due to the renin angiotensin system and secondly due to the secretion of aldosterone now another important thing is that once the reabsorption of salt and water occur due to which some other electrolytes also get absorbed into the blood this leads to the formation of antidiuretic hormone secretion from the brain ADH antidiuretic hormone secretion now this antidiuretic hormone antidiuretic hormone which is secreted from the brain it also leads to increased reabsorption of water in the renal tubules reabsorption of water from the renal tubules into the blood so the whole thing is the whole story is that in the persisting heart failure in the chronic heart failure 
peripheral edema occurs due to fluid retention a lot of salt and water is basically retained or maintained into the body and it is not being allowed to go in the form of urine now how this fluid retention occurs by the kidney there are basically three main mechanism first of all there is decreased glomerular filtration there is decreased glomerular filtration secondly there is activation of renin angiotensin system and third there is aldosterone secretion now the decrease in glomerular filtration the decreased filtration of salt and water occurs because of decrease in arterial pressure and due to constriction of the afferent arterioles now the second thing is that activation of renin angiotensin system also occurs and it also basically it also helps in the reabsorption of salt and water the small amount of filter, filtered sodium and water in the renal tubule is again reabsorbed it is reabsorbed into the blood so the the water is continuously being being reabsorbed and fluid retention continues to occur which ultimately leads to collection of fluid in the limbs which is the cause of peripheral edema now the third reason is aldosterone secretion aldosterone secretion can also occur due to angiotensin angiotensin is basically formed from renin and aldosterone secretion also occurs from the adrenal gland due to the high potassium potassium concentration and aldosterone again leads to increased sodium and water reabsorption from these tubules into the blood once this process has occurred it ultimately leads to the secretion of adh anti diuretic hormone and anti diuretic hormone comes from the brain it also acts on the renal tubule and it leads to further absorption of water from the renal tubules so that's all about the fluid retention by the kidneys in the persisting heart failure which is basically the main cause of peripheral edema in persisting heart failure or chronic heart failure thanks a lot for watching the video